One of the nutrients that is the most depleted from consuming carbohydrates, can anyone take a wild guess? Vitamin B1. So I want to spend a little time, because this one's really important. Um, vitamin B1, thiamine, it's called beriberi. Uh, a lot of people have almost like a subclinical deficiency in their body. It's called the great mimicker because it mimics so many other diseases. You're going to see that it has extensive uh, mimicking ability for all these problems. Um, what does B1 do? Well, basically it makes myelin, the protective sheath around your nervous system. That what, what happens when you're a diabetic? You basically um, you lose the myelin because the high sugar oxidizes the fat layer around the cell. It's called lipid oxidation. And by the way, B1 protects the myelin from being damaged. And that's why if you have peripheral neuropathy, you can take B1 and actually improve those symptoms pretty quick. I've, they made a fat-soluble B vitamin, it's called benfotamine, which is even a better remedy because it penetrates the fat cells a lot uh, more than actually the, just the regular thiamine. So benfotamine can penetrate, penetrate the brain by 25 times more than regular B1. So um, it's really good for neurological conditions, um, brain problems, nerve problems, peripheral neuropathy in your fingertips and the, in the toes. So that's one thing. B1 protects the cell, especially the mitochondria, against the damage from high sugar. If you take two diabetics with high sugar and you have one of them that's deficient in B1, the other one's not, the one of the ones that's deficient in B1 will experience the complications a lot more than the person that has B1. So B1 suppresses the complications from high sugar. So it protects the mitochondria. Why? Because B1 is a cofactor for at least five key enzymes in the mitochondria. So it's, it acts as a spark plug. It works with magnesium. So I, I took a long time to try to figure out how to explain this in a simple way, to, to make the biochemistry really simple, because you have, how many of you took biology in high school? You remember studying about the Krebs cycle? Yeah, how many really don't remember anything about it? Okay, good, yeah. So the Krebs cycle, it's basically a motor, it's a machine that goes, that turns food into energy. So you have a carburetor, right? How many of you know what a carburetor is? Okay, good. So basically you mix gas with air at the right ratio, and you have a little spark plug, and then it ignites, right? You have energy. That's what, that's what the Krebs cycle is. So it's just making energy. You need uh, B1. So uh, I was trying to figure out how to demonstrate that. So I create a little video. OK. I'm blowing gasoline onto a blowtorch. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're going to take away B1, create a B1 deficiency. No ignite. You can't ignite it. I couldn't think of any other way to demonstrate that. <clears throat> so, I mean, I, on Friday, I was uh, preparing for this, and I said, uh, Karen sees me with this, um, this uh, roadside flame thing, right? She goes, what are you doing with that? I said, no, everyone's doing it on YouTube. It's, it's a really great experiment. <laughs> so it's raining outside, and I said, just take a video of this. So um, I put cornstarch in my mouth, and I blew it. And it actually could, you, it looks like you're blowing gasoline. So don't try that at home. Um, but the right ratio of fuel to oxygen, you can ignite it with B1. And this is why um, B1 deficiencies create fatigue big time, especially if you're doing keto. If you're tired, if you're going through keto adaptation and you're keto fatigue, B1, any of the B vitamins as well, it'll actually bring your energy way up. You need magnesium as well, those two. So uh, B1 is considered a nerve vitamin because it uh, creates so many problems with the nerve if you're deficient in it. It's a helper factor. So these enzymes that do all this chemistry um, need B1 as an essential cofactor. If you don't have B1, these enzymes cannot work. Now, what creates a B1 deficiency? Sugar.
High, the more carbohydrates you consume, the more B1 deficient you're going to be. Also, if you don't have enough B1, you build up lactic acid. It's called la lactic acidosis. That's why the metformin, the side effect is B1, and you get all this lactic acid. It can change your pH, and it can change your breathing. You're like, <sighs> can't get enough air. Mitochondria, the energy factory of the body. So if you have too much um, sugar, you're going to uh, choke out or flood the engine, basically, and you're going to be tired. So B1 deficiencies intimately involved with cardiovascular function and respiratory function. So you can get a large heart, edema, um, difficulty breathing, blood pressure problems, palpitations, increased pulse rate. But a lot of times when you actually get this tested, it shows normal because you have to do a very special test. It's called uh, transketolate. Transketolate. So everyone say that. Trans? Keto. Late. Okay, good. So um, you do that test and you can pick up B1. But it's very hard to find this test. It's very expensive. So much better just to take the B1. And then if you feel better, you know you had a deficiency. <laughs> so digestion. GERD. Why would B1 affect GERD? Because B1 can, uh, is intimately involved in the autonomic nervous system, which is basically controlling all the valves of the body. So you get GERD and the valve doesn't close and the acid goes up. You feel the full sensation in your stomach. You can get an ulcer, gastroparesis, which is the sluggishness of food going through the digestive tract. So the autonomic nervous system, that is the system that works behind the scenes. It works on automatic. There are tremendous amounts of weird symptoms that you get from this. I'm going to cover a couple, but it's just like, like you lose your ability to, uh, like your tear ducts don't release uh, tears anymore. So, I mean, like, you wouldn't think that's connected to B1. So, lack of tears, excessive sweating. If you get out of the shower and you just break out in a sweat, B1 deficiency. Anxiety, nervous tension. When you take B1, you just feel like this sudden relief. There's a condition called POTS, uh, which I'm not going to kind of, I'm just going to briefly go over these, but you get up too fast and you feel dizzy and you fall down. There's a whole group of people who have this condition. It's a B1 deficiency, usually. Brain fog, double vision, difficulty swallowing, exercise intolerance. Anyone have that? <laughs> yeah. B1 gives you energy, so you actually, when you exercise. Also, any of the autoimmune disorders, if you're fatigued from that, it can be improved, especially Hashimoto's and a mess, if you're tired, you take B1, it can improve the, because it helps improve the enzyme for the mitochondria. So it's one of the most common things that I recommend when I was in practice and also now, and it just works. It's like a no-brainer, it's inexpensive. If you do, if you, I'm not saying you, you, sh you can't use a synthetic, but also use like nutritional yeast or a natural version of vitamin B as well, because anytime you take one fraction of a vitamin for a long period of time, it could create imbalances. Vertigo, balance problems, impaired taste. So the autonomic nervous system, you have two parts. Parasympathetic, which is rest and digest, and then sympathetic, which is flight or fight. So part of the sympathetic nervous system is embedded inside the adrenal. And so you got this interesting gland on the your adrenals on top of the kidney, because it's, it's half um, nervous system and half gland. So uh, it's right in the abdomen, so you get this quick release of adrenaline to act you know, create different effects. But the imbalance in this system can happen from a B1 deficiency. Hiccups. How many have ever had a hiccup? Takes a B1. Reoccur ear infections. Mental stress. Anyone ever experienced stress at least once in your life? One, two, three, okay. It really helps stress. Uh, panic attacks, nightmares. I used to, my kids, I used to give them B1. If they had a nightmare, it just, bam, handles it. So it's involved in so many things, ADD, autism. If you're a coach and you're coaching people, it'd be a really good thing to recommend. I want to touch on this structure in your brain called the hippocampus. It's kind of like a relay switch into your database memory system. It, they don't know exactly what it does, but it, it's involved in memory and um, your ability to locate yourself in time and space. So how many are really good at um, driving somewhere and finding th directions in your area where you live? 
How many are not good at that? Yeah, you need a GPS, right? So it has to do with this hippocampus. Birds have these huge um, structures in their brain, and they can, uh, they can just fly south, and they know where to go. Um, hippocampus is involved in that. So hip the hippocampus has receptors for B1. So if you're deficient in B1, you can affect that. You're going to start noticing that you're going to go in a room and can't quite remember why you went in there. How many have ever experienced that? At least once. OK, good. Let me call 911 now. So what happens is how you're going to become B1 deficient is all the carbohydrates. All the carbohydrates. It's going to deplete your B1. So there's a tremendous amount of additional things like related to your digestion, your heart, your brain. Um, and I gave you guys a chart on all the different symptoms. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you can see that there's uh, everything from depression. And definitely if you're trying to, if you lost, if you're exercising and you lost that inertia, and you, just, you lost that get up and go, it's usually B1. B1 affects um, part of the autonomic nervous system that innervates the brain stem, especially the respiratory centers. So there's a condition called SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome. There's a lot of research related to um, you know, these infants dying and then finding there's a B1 deficiency. Probably from the infant formula, it's all glucose. You know, Sleep apnea, B1. It's also related to high insulin because the sugar pulls out B1. So B1 is really important in protecting the cell against damage and also um, helping the enzymes work in your mitochondria. It also mimics mercury poisoning, and mercury depletes B1. So here's some things that will deplete it. White rice, diuretics, refined sugar and carbs, coffee, if you have too much. If you actually drink coffee and you have B1 after it, you feel a lot better. Uh, gastric bypass, because most of the, a lot of the B1 is uh, absorbed in the small intestine. So if you're bypassing that small of your intestine, uh, you, you could have problems with the absorption. Aging, metformin, cooking, diabetes. All diabetics, type 1 and type 2, should be taking B1 and the B-complex. With the cells of the pancreas that are damaged or overworking or underworking, they're not, you're not going to be able to pull in B vitamins that well. So the minimum dosage of B is not enough. You need more to actually penetrate the cells that regulate insulin. Too much chocolate, of course. Different chemical properties in uh, coffee, tea, chocolate, and wine can deplete B1 if you have a lot over a period of time. Raw fish, candida, and mussels and oysters. How to test? Just if you take it and you feel a lot better, <laughs> you're good. Go ahead and press your calf and see if there's any tenderness. Go ahead and press your calf and raise your hand if you have any tenderness. Uh-oh. No, I'm just kidding. It could be B1 deficient. But you normally will feel a sudden release of like stress when you take B1 if you're deficient. So you're going to feel, wow, wow I feel so much better. Uh, there's a test called Raglan. So if you, get, if you lay down, take the blood pressure, and you stand up, and the blood pressure drops, the systolic drops too, too far, and you get dizzy, um, you usually are B1 deficient. you have a B1 deficiency. Vitamin D can really help insulin resistance. 